Oh, there we go. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct View. Sam I. B. DeGangi of the media speaks low def and live right there, live listeners. Welcome aboard HDEF. You won't be posted for 12 hours, but I'm talking to you anyway. Hello and welcome aboard. Um, guys, the massive Fukushima update, uh, so big this month that I actually had to do them in twos. And, uh, two days worth. The last one was an hour long. I don't think that this is going to be an hour long. Mainly because Christelle and I are hoping to go and ride roller coasters at Kennywood. And we have to go to bed or we're not going to get up because we're lazy like that. Um, friends, all jokes aside, if you don't start with some humor, you're absolutely freaking doomed. Because a lot of this is really bad news. And I'll tell you why. A lot of people listening to this are not in Japan. I do have some Japanese listeners who are probably my only listeners right now. And a lot of this, <coughs> excuse me as I die, a lot of this is being censored overseas. They're not getting the news on this like they're supposed to. So they're tuning into the news from other parts of the world, and fortunately, they trust me to some extent. And um, that, that tends to make a lot of my American listeners or English listeners or whatever zone out. They, they, they go into Never Never Land. A lot of the nuclear issues that I'm talking about today are actually things that will affect you in other parts of the world other than Japan. So make sure you pay attention to today's uh, news on the day two massive Fukushima update. World Japan win the Darwin Award. This is Washington's blog. This was reported last October by them. Scientists warned that an earthquake could take out Fukushima. The Japanese ignored the warning and even tore down the natural seawall which protected Fukushima from tidal waves. Pause. Now, uh, I have a guest staying at my house for a few weeks, and I, I was talking to her about Fukushima. She's very aware of uh, news and things like that. I, am, I didn't know how much she had heard about Fukushima, so I, was, I told her, since she's stuck listening to the show as being a prisoner here in my studio, uh, that I was going to go ahead and explain this in a way that maybe people have tuned in, you found this show, and I have a habit, I think, of addressing this in such a, matter, a manner that I assume everybody knows what this is. March 11th, and for those of you that do know, please just give me two seconds here. Um, March 11th, 2011, a massive earthquake triggered a couple of meltdowns in Fukushima at the nuclear power plant. The tidal wave came in and then led to a total of four meltdowns, melt-outs and melt-throughs. <clears throat> Meltdown, we all know what that is. Uh, melt-through is when it goes through the protective containment vessel and into the ground, which is important because it can get into the ground water. And then, of course, the rain and uh, uh, disperses it everywhere for everyone to get nice cancers and heart diseases from. Um, there was also what's called a melt-out. <clears throat> that is when the core explodes, and that's what all the black goo was that you were seeing. I, you might still be, for all I know, seeing in Tokyo. That's what that was. It was pieces of the core. And uh, you, for those of you that think, why should I listen to you? Because I'm reporting to you what was said by Arne Gunderson, who happens to be a physicist. A rather arrogant one, but a physicist. Um... And a very good physicist, I might add. Scientists have warned that this tidal wave was coming. Not only did they ignore it, but they took down the seawall which protected Fukushima from tidal waves. And this is important today because the same scientists in many instances are warning that Iran is going to experience this kind of an earthquake. And for anybody that hasn't lived in a peanut shell for the last three years, Iran is about to get the green light on this disastrous idea. And it's nothing to do with Arabs and Jews and everything to do with the fact that they're going to Fukushima, the Middle East. It says, now Fukushima is getting worse and worse. There's two links right here for anyone that doubts me at Washington's blog to uh, let you know what worse and worse means. In a nutshell, it means cancers. It means that there are 50%, we reported this last show, 50% of the young people living near Fukushima are testing positive for thyroid cancer symptoms. 
the, the, what more needs to be said? Does that sound fun to you? Under your chin, some nice thyroid cancer? Does that, does that sound enjoyable? Because it's washing over here, friends. If you're in California, guess where it's washing over to? If you're now in California, guess where most of your fruits and vegetables come from? That matters a lot to vegetarians, too. Have the Japanese learned their lesson, you might ask? Are they decommissioning nuclear power plants, which are built in dangerous environments? No, well, hell, of course not. Instead, it says they are restarting the nuclear power plant near a volcano, which is about to blow. A month ago, there was a, an eruption at Mount Ontaki. It looks like Ontake. Oh, come on. Quit buffering. But as Newsweek reports, it says a nuclear power plant only 40 miles away will be restarted anyway. So we ignored the scientists because there weren't any hard proof and we kept Fukushima going. Now we have proof of an eruption. We have proof of seismic activity. And we are still going to start the nuclear reactor. Well, man's warming the planet. They have to. Man is not warming the planet. The planet hasn't warmed in 15 years. The only thing man is doing with fossil fuels is giving you and I lung cancer, which is fine because new plants, even when they're running properly, give us every other kind of cancer plus lung cancer. Local officials have voted to reopen a nuclear power plant in Japan despite warnings of increased volcanic activity in the region from scientists. Who wants to, you know, who listens to them? They were only right about Fukushima in your country once. The decision comes despite a warning on Friday that Japan's seismological agency had documented an increase in activity at the Aoyama volcano located 40 miles away from the power station. Oh, what could possibly go wrong there? Sunday, it says, will be the first Japanese nuclear power plant to reopen since 2011. However, the decision comes as scientific authorities warn of increased seismic activity on the island. Volcanologists have warned that the 2011 earthquake which measured 9.0 on the Richter scale, has increased the likelihood of volcanic activity in the region. Going from bad to worse over and over again is what that is. The Sendai plant is also situated only 31 miles from Mount Sakujarama. If you're horrible with other languages as I am, it's S-A-K-U-R-A-G-I-M-A. -A Sakurajima? How's that? An extremely active volcano which erupts on a regular basis, so I guess you may want to learn how to pronounce it. The documentation of new activity comes barely a month after the eruption of Mount Ontaki, when 57 hikers were killed on the slopes. Well, like 57,000 are going to be killed when this uh, gets rid of a nuke plant for you. There are no accompanying signs of seismic activity prior to the eruption, which might have alerted Japanese authorities. So it said, well, what could go wrong? Here's a hint, and there's links for this. A cauldron eruption at one of several volcanoes surrounding the Sendai nuclear power plant could hit the reactors and cause a nationwide disaster, said Tasha, Tosha Hitsugu Fuji, head of a government commission panel on volcanic eruption prediction, and uh, e, e News explains it as follows. Wall Street Journal, October 23, 2014, one major volcanic eruption could make Japan extinct. A study by experts at the Kobe University warns. We should be aware it wouldn't be a surprise if such gigantic eruptions were to take place at any moment. And here's what makes me angry. Some idiot legally goes out and kills a lion, and the left is in an uproar. Oh my God, you killed a lion. However, we have nuclear power plants, which could make the entire country of Japan extinct. Nobody gives a rat's ass. That's what amazes me. Um, this is Japan Times. Colossal volcanic eruption could destroy Japan at any time. 
Uh, this is also Japan Times. Volcano near Sendai nuclear power plant is shaking and may erupt. Authorities warned on Friday that a volcano and a few dozen kilometers from the Sendai nuclear power plant may erupt. That was October 24th. Again on October 18th, Sendai reactors vulnerable to eruptions. This is from the Ashihi Sinbrun, and I'm shortening these. You can see them at the site. Now is the time to rethink the risk of operating nuclear power plants. It is the first time that Japan has seriously evaluated the danger posed by volcanoes. Nuclear power plants would, that is not could, suffer devastating damage from catastrophic eruptions. Radioactive materials will continue to be scattered throughout the world. So don't tell me Japan has a right to do whatever it wants to do when it's affecting the entire health of the world, because if you say that, you're wrong. Um, Japan Times noted just last week uh, from the article, the utility and the Japanese Nuclear Regulatory Authority have also decided that there is little chance of a major volcanic eruption in the next several decades. Well, these things run for between 30 to 50 years. So if it's going to happen within 30 years, it's very, very bad for reasons that I just gave you. Not to mention, if it was to hit during shutdown, you would still be in trouble because it's very hard to move these things to safe places. Uh, they have, they're in cooling pools. Look up cooling pool Fukushima if you'd like to stay up with nightmares forever. Basically, if that falls over, you can say goodbye to life as we know it in the entire northern hemisphere. If you don't believe me, then please believe Dr. Helen Caldicott. Please do believe uh, Lauren Moet. Please believe Kevin Blanche, for those of you that say that I don't have any sources. I have sources coming out of my ears. Japanese utility Kyushu Electric, that would be Kyushu, K-Y-U-S-H-U, said on Monday that it was monitoring volcanic activity near its Sendai plant, but did not take any special precautions. No, why would they want to do that? Meanwhile, it says back in reality, E&E &E News rounds it up as follows. The Independent, August 16th, 2015. Japan's weather agency issued a warning that the likelihood of an eruption of Sakurajima was extremely high. I did better that time, didn't I? After it detected a spike in seismic activity, they have warned an evacuation of the city of just over 600,000 people. I said 50,000. No, I was wrong. That'd be 600,000 people may be necessary. The possibility of a large-scale eruption has become extremely high. So it's not as bad as I said it was. It's much worse. Uh, Manichi, August 17th, 2015. On August 15th alone, there were 1,023 volcanic earthquakes. Uh, Ashi Simbun, the mountain is expanding. Estimate a large volume of magma continues to accumulate. Uh, Reuters, which is Kyoto there, the agency said it had raised the warning level to an unprecedented four. The GG Press, G-I-G-I, -I, um, remained on alert for signs of a major eruption. Called on the public to act calmly. A major eruption could be imminent. Yeah, of course, be calm. Smile at the radiation. It won't hurt you. It'll dance all around you. Look up Smile at the Radiation once, by the way. They really told people that. Wall Street Journal remained on high alert in Japan for major eruptions. Mount Sarajima goes on and on and on. Bloomberg has it. The Times has it over and over and over again. And yet they're starting nuclear reactors in Japan again, as if uh, history is going to dance around them. America nuked them twice. Now they've nuked themselves four times, and they're getting ready to do it again. And if you don't know, there is a lot more radiation, a lot more radiation going into the atmosphere than um, and in the environment than when uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened. A lot more. Uh, the only reason more people died immediately there, of course, was because it was a blast. Uh, this is End of the American Dream, Michael Snyder. Why America should be on high alert for a major earthquake along the New Madrid Fault. This is where you begin to wonder why why in the world, again, is everyone so easily distracted by Kim Kardashian's ass or something to the point where they miss really important things? We have a plethora of nuclear power plants all over the area that I'm about to report uh, and give you commentary on, and that matters 
because they like to tell you that the tsunami caused the meltdowns, meltouts, and meltthroughs at Fukushima, and that, in fact, is only partially correct. The initial two meltdowns were caused by the earthquake, regardless of the tidal wave, and that's important. And also, for those of you that think there can't be a tidal wave in the middle of the United States, if a dam breaks near certain nuclear reactors, especially the one near Arkansas, I believe, there is a 100% chance of a meltdown. And we've covered that before. 100 Guaranteed to be a meltdown if that was to hit that plant. It would wash over it. Might as well be a tsunami. This is why this matters. Listen to this. Did you know that a magnitude 3.5 earthquake hit the New Madrid Fault a week ago? This is September 1st. According to Fox News, the New Madrid Fault line is approximately 20 times larger than the San Andreas Fault in California, and it is starting to wake up. Most people don't realize this, but this fault zone has produced some of the largest earthquakes in U.S. history. In 1811 and 1812, immensely powerful earthquakes along the New Madrid Fault rang church bells in Boston. For you Usher fans, that'd be a long way away. And permanently changed the course of the Mississippi River. Changed the course of the Mississippi River. And if you, if you doubt me, I'll tell you another fact you're going to be amazed to hear. The earthquake that hit Japan that caused Fukushima changed the tilt of the axis of the Earth. It goes on that if we had a similar earthquake today, the devastation would be unimaginable. Unfortunately for us, earthquake activity in the middle part of the country is becoming much more common. The USGS says that the number of significant earthquakes in the middle part of the country has more than quadrupled in recent years, and that the USGS has publicly admitted that the New Madrid Fault Zone has the potential, and there's a link here for it, for larger and more powerful earthquakes than previously thought. Very few Americans are talking about it right now, but as you will see below, the threat is very, very real. For one thing, it would cost in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, a series of big shakes of the sort of seen in 1811 or 1812 would cause about $300 billion in damage, says Swiss Ray. The cost would be double the damage of Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans in 2005. It's 2015. We're still recovering from that. Houses, especially brick ones, would immediately collapse. Buildings would sink sideways into liquefying earth. Bridges might tumble into rivers, and the route of the Mississippi River could change as it did in the past quake. People would die, perhaps by the thousands. And they can't even estimate the death toll. They have no idea. And what would happen? Well, the financial markets would collapse, for one thing. Um, the, North, the U.S. Northern Command just got involved in an exercise that simulated an accident. And according to the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, we'll call them IMA, <clears throat> along with representatives from the other state agencies, National Guard Bureau and U.S. Northern Command, along with Polish Armed Forces, what? Participated in the exercise, providing incident management in the emergency management teams. What did they find? They gained a tremendous amount of insight by having IMA other civilian agencies in the National Bureau there. Um, according to them, it's, the, it's critical to strengthen the local and state partners for this, and they have found out that they are grossly unprepared for such an event. Is there a reason that we should be concerned? The author says yes. On September 15th, the 70th anniversary of the UN General Assembly begins. <clears throat> the U.S. media is not saying much about this, but it is very widely reported that the international media, that France plans to introduce a resolution that will give the UN Security Council recognition to a Palestinian state. And this ties in, you'll hear in a minute why. Shortly after the new session begins, for much uh, more on these developments as an article, for years the U.S. government <clears throat> has been on the one standing in the way of such a resolution, but now Barack Obama is indicating that he may not stand in the uh, line of it this time. Uh, he took a step forward, a tougher line with Israel, um, saying that the U.S. will allow the United Nations to vote on relations related to the Palestinian state. In essence, the decision is to divide Israel into two pieces and lie uh, solely in Obama's hands to do this. And if Barack Obama gives the go-ahead, there will be a UN Security Council resolution establishing a Palestinian state. Why does that matter? 
Once that happens, all hell could break loose. For many years, people all over the world have been connecting the division of the land of Israel with the coming Madrid earthquake. For example, just consider what Shane Warren shared during an interview with Sid Roth. And this is, uh, this is, this is interesting to note for those of you that have noticed that uh, the Bible prophecies tend to be on point 100% of the time. And they are, by the way. We've gone over that here prior. Uh, could we be on the verge of seeing this take place? Without a doubt, America is ripe for judgment. And it says, we have shaken our fists at God and we continue to plunge even more deeply into wickedness. The author writes that he believes uh, one of the reasons why Planned Parenthood videos came out at the right time is to show just how evil we've become. And he goes on and on and on and on, but what he's saying is instead of just talking about these things, he wants us to be part of the pollution, a solution. Benjamin Birak, Nathan Leal, Lins, Lins, Leo Linz, Lees, and I are organizing a nationwide call to prayer of repentance. And uh, you know what? That might not be such a bad idea. It's September the 18th. And for those of you that don't get into the uh, more religious prophecy side of it, it doesn't change the fact that we're due for an earthquake that could greatly jeopardize everyone's life, largely because of the nuke industry. Um, Foxnews.com has this up, and this caught my attention the moment I saw it. Dangerous farce. Lawmakers rip Iran deal over a report that Tehran can use its own new inspectors. Now, we know that any time, even America, that we have anybody in the nuclear industry that is allowed to police themselves, they greatly abuse it. So what are we doing? We're giving the nuclear terroristic threat state of Iran, and I said threat, permission to check its own nuclear reactors to make sure it's not cheating. How the hell does that even come up on the bargaining table where somebody might think that that is a good idea? No wonder Donald Trump is doing so well in the polls because he has some idea what a deal is. And whoever came up with this idea does not know what a deal is. Because you can't trust them to check their own... If they're breaking the rules, why would they tell them themselves? That doesn't make any sense. Capitol Hill opposition to the Iranian nuclear deal was stoked Wednesday by a bombshell report that Tehran will be allowed to use its own experts to inspect one of the country's most controversial nuke sites. Oh, I am not seeing that they are breaking any laws. They can keep on doing what they're doing. Next thing you know is a mushroom cloud. Allowing the Iranians to inspect their own nuclear sites, particularly a notorious military site, is like allowing inmates to run the jail, said correctly Lindsey Graham, R RSC, a presidential candidate, in the statement. Lindsey Graham, by the way, would make a terrible president, but he's right on this. The Associated Press reported Wednesday that in an unusual and secret agreement with the UN agency that normally carries out such work, Iran can use its own experts and equipment in the search for evidence for activities that it has consistently denied that it's trying to develop nuclear weapons. So Iran is going to use Iranians to make sure that Iranians are not cheating on the nuke deal. Only John Kerry, who negotiated this, could possibly come up with an idea that is as dreadfully stupid as this one is. Why don't you just let somebody on house arrest monitor whether or not they're uh, using heroin? I didn't use any, no. <laughs> At issue is an investigation of the Parchin nuclear site by the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran has refused access to Parchin for years and denied any interest or work on nuclear weapons. And to prove that, they're going to use their own people. That sounds like a remarkably stupid idea. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Got four more stories to go, so please don't zone out on me. I just want to invite you all real quick to check out Sticker Junkie. Look at these stickers. See how cool they are? You can get one by going to the uh, mediaspeaks. Well, go, actually, the easiest way, uh, The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Let me know you want a sticker. I'll make sure you get one there. A dollar a piece. Order some. I'll send you a whole bunch. And uh, they were made by Sticker Junkie. They did an amazing job with them. And if you go to StickerJunkie.com, let David Lake know that you heard about it from the correct views. You're going to get an amazing deal on your stickers. And they're going to look amazing because all of Sticker Junkie stickers always do. Also, make sure you look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He's a writer, and you can find him on Facebook, even though this show has just left Facebook. Um, <clears throat> you can find him on Facebook. Let him know you heard about his writings from the correct views. He'll be very happy to hear that. 
All right, friends, KSDK.com. I don't think I've ever had them on here before. City officials change mind and close Radioactive Park. And I brought this to the show not so much because it's directly related to Fukushima, but it shows that when there is some kind of a problem, you can't count on the officials to help you at all. And I wouldn't go to the site because it keeps buffering and it's really annoying. K KSDK, your site sucks. Um... The problem is they won't tell you when something is dreadfully poisoned until you figure it out yourself when people start dropping like flies and demand change and then they'll say, oh, we didn't know and give it a half ass change. We saw this when our men and women were in on the SS Ronald Reagan and they got juiced from the uh, Fukushima cleanup during the meltdown. They were there to uh, assist and nobody ever told them they were going to get juiced which is understandable. I don't think maybe the uh, nuclear power plants were unfortunately the first thing they thought of. However, they never admitted to it later either, and they have catastrophic family-destroying cancers and illnesses today. Well, here's another example of just not being told the truth until it's just a little bit late here. Hazelwood city officials closed uh, St. Sin Park Monday after reconsidering their stance over the weekend. The park backs up the Coldwater Creek which has dumped radioactive material into the park's floodplain, contaminating the soil. What a remarkable idea. The Army Corps of Engineers is overseeing the remediation of the park and says the contamination is limited to the areas that they have just designated. Still, concerned citizens wanted the park completely closed until the mess was cleaned up. Those concerns were voiced at a public meeting last Thursday, where the city said they had no intention of closing the whole park because the threat of illness related to the contamination was small. It's always small, but look up, there is no safe level of radiation, and you'll find all the science to back up the very sentence when you look it up online. Over and over and over and over again, it's seen. And don't give me this x-ray BS, because how often do you get x-rays? And if you do get too many x-rays, it could in fact develop into a cancer. So there is no safe level of radiation. The Army Corps felt that there was very little risk to people who were not camping out there day after day, that kind of thing. And not many park users do that, so we felt that was an appropriate decision at the time, said Matt Zimmerman, city manager for Hazelwood. He shouldn't be allowed to be a dog catcher. Mary Osco has been at the park nearly every day for the past 29 years, however. No, she's one of the ones, you know, there's not many of them, so her life didn't matter. She lives in a home that borders the park. It was about 100 yards from the contaminated soil. Mary was recently diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. She is terminal and will be lucky to live two more years. So there you go. My mother-in-law died of that. It was the most agonizing year and a half that anybody has ever seen. It was absolutely miserable. So maybe... Maybe after this happens, it's not so safe, right? That's just as perfectly okay. It's not a little bit too late, is it? She believes the contamination caused her cancer because she would walk in the park every day for years. Nobody warned her. She didn't know. She just walked through this park getting juiced. For Mary, no one should be anywhere near the contamination until it's gone. Let's err on the side of being conservative, she said. Let's, make, let's take no risk. When our children are involved, forget the children, how about everyone? Lung cancer isn't any more fun for the adults, I promise you. She and a handful of other concerned citizens sought signatures from people living near the park over the weekend. So they're finally going to get it shut down. But look, look what has to happen before that happens. I'm trying to warn all of you before that begins, before that becomes a reality for you and your family. IBTimes.com, U.S. developing economic sanctions against China over cyber theft. This made the massive Fukushima update because it... Do you remember when Clinton made a huge error and or uh, misjudgment and allowed a lot of the nuclear secrets to leave the nation and end up uh, in the hands of the Chinese, which is why we could be facing a mushroom cloud over an American city thanks to uh, uh, Bill Clinton's incompetence? Well, Obama seems to have done it again, and we've been hacked. And now China knows a lot about our uh, infrastructure and that consists of nuclear power plants and, and any kind of uh, 
It gives them a, a one-up on us in case they ever want to. It's one more thing they know about us that they shouldn't, and I thought it was alarming and should be mentioned here in the update. In an unprecedented move, the Obama administration is developing a package of economic sanctions against individuals and companies in China who have benefited from the Chinese government theft of American secrets, the Washington Post reported on Sunday. You know what? It's one of the few times I'll ever say this. I'm 100% in agreement with Obama on this. It is time that they pay. The final decision has not been made over whether to issue the sanctions, but sources said the administration will likely decide in the next two weeks. If he doesn't, it's one more reason to chalk him up as a terrible president. They cannot be allowed to think that they should ever do this to us again. This is where I with, wish we had uh, Ron Paul or uh, someone like him in office. If President Obama does decide to issue the sanctions, it would be the first search use of them since the signed the order in April, allowing for the freezing of financial groups against uh, overseas people who participate in cyber espionage. Guys, do you understand what this does? It is a very, very big deal. Um, it gives them a real look at the way things run. Possibly the... the uh, the inner workings of nuclear power plants. You don't want your potential enemies, and that's certainly what China has become, to have that kind of knowledge. Guys, two more stories to get to. Pediatricians target GMO farms as cause of increased birth defects. I thought this was humorous, because at no point did the bonehead ever bother to mention that, uh, you know, this could in fact be Fukushima-related as well. Am I saying you should eat GMOs? No, GMOs killed my dad. Uh, look up... Um, Oh, uh, GMO liver cancer. It's on my site. I did it a couple weeks ago. Julie Fiddler, InfoWars. Birth defects are on the rise in Hawaii, leaving many to wonder if pesticides are to blame, including some pediatricians witnessing the spike in birth defects in babies. Nothing to do with the fact that I've been saying since the earthquake and uh, meltdown, melt out and melt through happened in Fukushima that you cannot live where? Come on. Regular viewers, say it with me. Do not live on the coast of Alaska, Oregon, Washington, California, and do not live in Hawaii. Why? In the town of Wayma, pediatrician Carla Nelson has seen at least nine severe heart malformations. Look up with things like cesium due to your heart. In babies in the last five years. Five years, how coincidental. Ten times more than the national average. That's about what was predicted when they said not to live in Hawaii because of Fukushima. For the past three years, Nelson and other local doctors have found themselves at the center of a controversy over a, whether a crash crop of GM corn, that couldn't be Fukushima, modified to withstand pesticides at four of the six main islands is the cause of the economic boom or the source of its birth defects. Never mind the quadruple disaster going on in Fukushima. Granted, I am anti-GMO, but this is not what we are seeing there. We are seeing the effects of Fukushima accelerating cancers off the chart exactly as predicted by everyone, including this show since day one, which is why you cannot live there or eat anything that comes from there. Can I be more clear? I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. And friends, that brings us to the much awaited for dum de dum de dum de of the day. Oh, let's get our dum de music going. Oh, yes, Fukushima does, in fact, have a dum de of the day as well. Listen to this. Poll shows majority wants Congress to approve the Iran deal. Majority of who? 90% of the nation doesn't even know what the hell the Iran deal is. And I promise you, they have absolutely no idea that Iran has warring factions of Islam within it, waiting, itching to use it as a dirty bomb. And they certainly don't have any idea. They don't even know what a dirty bomb is. They don't know what happens from spent fuel. And I promise you, the average voter does not know that the same scientists that predicted the earthquake and tsunami in Japan are the same ones predicting it to happen in Iran, 
in the spot in Bashir where they are building this reactor. I guarantee they don't know that because if they did, they wouldn't be in favor of it. This is the dumbest article I've ever read in my life in all of Fukushima dumdies of the day. This is the stupidest freaking thing I've ever heard. The Hill. A new survey shows a majority of Americans wants Congress to uphold the Obama administration's nuclear deal with Iran. My ass they do. A majority of Americans don't even know where the hell Iran is. According to the survey, the University of Maryland, 55% of respondents said Congress should get behind the agreement despite some concerns. Yeah, like an earthquake making the entire Middle East a uh, death zone. How about that? 23% meanwhile said lawmakers should instead ratchet up the sanctions and 14% wanted the U.S. officials to go back to the negotiating table. I wonder how many of them know that Iran gets to inspect Iran to make sure that Iran isn't cheating. In a key stat for the Democratic backers of the agreement, 61% of independents recommended it. The poll was conducted online and the participants went through an in-depth process of listening to arguments from both sides. My ass. Let me tell you something. This Iran deal is going to be worse for the Middle East than 10 billion Jews and 10 million Zionists during the Second Coming. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off for The Media Speaks, reminding you to look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. Um, if you want to donate to the show, you can do so at The Media at uh, Correct Views on Hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show, and hitting share does remarkable things for the show. It helps us in ways that I cannot overstate. So please do that, friends. Good night. God bless.